at the divine lotus feet of our beloved master bhagwan shri satya sai baba respected chakravarti sir brother nimesh pandya all the elders very dear brothers and sisters very loving sairam to each one of you here seeing this wonderful gathering heart is jumping with joy and first time maybe i am feeling bit nervous to talk to you because i am sitting with people who are serving god those who are chosen by god to spread his message sahasra sirusha purusha vedam says god is thousand headed today i see swami in thousands of heads here seated here swami is to say you will see my vishwarupa really today when i am standing here i feel i am seeing swami's vishwarupa in four hands and all sides so much of presence of divinity it's a really a fulfilling moment in life today we have more than 2000 samiti conveners from all over the country this is the real sai organization which we are able to see today here the organization the grassroots level where sai work happens that is what we are witnessing today entire satya sai organization is founded on this beautiful sai samitis samiti is like a heart it's like a heart which pumps the blood which keeps the body going which keeps the body alive which how important is a heart for a body so is the samiti is important for sai organization i was just reading some of the swami's discourses on various occasions to sai organizations swami says why did swami lent his name for sai organization swami says the sole purpose of sai organization he has described in different discourses what i understood he has given two purposes one is self transformation and secondly in one discourse specifically he says i want to foster bharatiya culture that's why i want to start this organization i have started this organization these two are the main reasons prayab swami lent his name and started organization and encouraged it to happen and spread it all over the country and the world because samiti becomes the first entry point for any devotee into sai mission it is a threshold into which a, any devotee can walk in that's why samiti is very very important in sai mission the field work happens only at samiti level the seva work happens at samiti level the main reason why swami started this bhajan mandali sir samitis is the reason why swami wanted every individual person in this country should be able to walk out of his home reach to the place of sai bhajan mandali or sai samiti and able to participate in a spiritual activity able to take peace with him able to feel joy for him and if he is stressful if he has any other issues he should be able to peacefully spend some time in introspection or in the name in the namasmaran that's why swami started sai samitis and sai bhajan mandalis so much importance has been given for this work today 
we are so happy to see so many of you who are real servants of God, who are chosen and picked up individually by Swami Himself are present. And we are very happy on behalf of Sri Satyasai Central Trust to host this Convener's Conference in Prashanti Nilayam. We are really, really happy and we are very joyful that it gives us so much of uh, confidence and uh, to see because Prashanti Nilayam, our Central Trust is not different. I myself and uh, uh, Nimesh Pandaji, were, we are talking. He says there is no more difference between organization and trust. Anywhere, wherever Satya Sai is there, we are all linked by that one single bond named Sri Satya Sai. <laughs> it is not only here. That is the reason why we even started an initiative called Satya Sai Global Council to bring the entire Sai mission in the entire globe, entire world together so that they all stay together because wherever she is Satya Sai, that is the common thread. Agar there is a, if there is a garland, there are a lot of flowers in it, but the common thread is the one which holds it together. Various organizations are different flowers which we are offering to Swami. It is Sri Satya Sai which is the thread which runs and holds this entire organizations together. That is the thing which we all, all of us should always remember. Swami, the very preamble of his, uh, when he gave the preamble to organization, he said, I am giving this organization only make sure this spiritual knowledge is spread, not by just teaching, but by practice. When we come here, today we are hearing, we said there are 99 speakers who are going to speak in the next three days. Swami in one of his discourses said, don't come and hear lecture for entertainment, but hear them for enlightenment. Don't come here for just entertainment. This is not an entertainment, but this is an enlightenment. We should, when you go back, you should have enlightened yourself further. You should have been enriched your knowledge. You should have learnt more about Sai mission, Sai teachings, the way the Swami expected each one of us. Each Samiti convener is a, should be a role model for anybody in that community. 2011, prior to 2011 and after 2011. Till 2011, we had Bhagwan, his physical, the enchanting, that beautiful divine form. And whatever we did, whatever, whichever way we conducted ourselves, people were focused only on Swami. But after 2011, the only way they experience Swami is through all of us. So, it is more important now, Abhi, this is a changed scenario. Now, all the more reason, all Sai Sevaks or Sai conveners, whether it is any office bearer from, right from Samiti convener to All India President, Global Council, then Managing Trustee, whoever they are, we are all, we all fall at the same feet. We all seek refuge in same God. Swami, in one of his discourse, he said, Vokka talli pillalam. He said, we are children of one mother. One vokka tiga puvulam. He said, we are all flowers of one, one creeper. He said, vokka desha pauralam. We are all citizens of one country. This unity, Swami wanted all of us together. That's why He emphasized that only when we are united, we, are, we have one father, one mother, we are flowers of one tree, we are citizens of one country. That's why Swami perhaps said, organization is to foster Bharatiya culture. We are from this great land, Bharat, 
we are really fortunate that we are born on this great soil, a sacred soil of Bharat. We are born in this great country, a country which is full of divine personalities, full of yogic people, yogis, munis, rishis, paramahamsas, great avatars. This soil is full of divine energy and divine vibrations. And we have taken birth on this great soil. And moreover, we have come face to face with avatar, the Kali Yuga avatar, Bhagwan Sri Sati Sai Baba. What greater fortune there can be than this to be here? And more so, to be part of Sai organization, to be office bearer of Sai organization is much more. Actually, we are, we are achieved this or we have received this blessing only because we have done so much of good karma in many, many lives in the past. That is what it confers such a lovely, great positions in this, in this life. Swami also said, when you are coming into Sai organization, remember, only service which, will, which is dear to me, nothing else is dear to Bhagwan. He has been telling everybody, it is not only that only office bearer can serve, even others will serve. Swami said, you serve so that you deserve my grace. So, from now onwards, we only take this mantra, you serve to deserve Sai's grace. We should keep on doing that work. That is the only mantra. Any other spiritual practices, Namasparada, yes, definitely, which will make us more humble to do service. That's why Swami also created Bhajan Mandalis. Nobody else knows more than, in fact, a district president or a, a state president may not know as much as a, a Samiti Convernor knows the locality, the knows the area, the knows the people who are there. That's why today it is some sort of a reconnect to all the people here because last two, three years we have seen COVID. Last two years we did not have any activity in the organization, in the centers because, because of COVID protocols. We could not come. We have to have social distancing. So, we, because of the COVID infections, we had asked every unit to be closed down. Now again, now Swami's grace, the normalcy is restored. We are back to again Samitis and Bhajana Mandalis. The very fact that we are back to that and now the conference is happening and the theme of the conference is back to basics. That means, even uh, Brother Nimesh Pandey was saying, don't do any big, big projects in your organ in your samitis. Don't plan anything big. It's all that Swami wanted is, Swami wanted Bhajana Mandalis, samitis, Balavika's work, study groups, Mahila Vibhag, only these things which doesn't require any money. Again, Swami said, in, in samiti level, we should not seek any money from anybody. We should never seek any money from anybody because people come there for peace of mind. People come there, just they have something which they need to lighten themselves. They come there to pray. Let us not burden them, let us not embarrass them. Let us not do anything by seeking anything or giving any projects. That's why Swami said, don't seek whatever it is there within your reach, within your means, you do the seva there. So, to do a small Narayan Seva, two, three people can come together and decide and do it. We don't need to seek. So, Swami is very clearly has emphasized, don't seek any money. Don't have any political affiliations. Don't bring any political affiliations. We try and Prashantin is a place where all the politicians of all the parties come there. Everybody comes there, take blessings and go. Every temple, every ashrams, people visit. But that doesn't mean we become anything political. We should not have anything to do with politics. Satyasai organization and politics are very different. They, are, they have to be kept away from s politics and the organization are too different. They have nothing to do with it. We should not have any office bearer, 
if he is an active member of any political organization, please, uh, district president or anybody, please take an, uh, a corrective measure. Uh, convey to them a, a active political uh, functionary cannot be an active member again in Sai organization. These things which Swami has very categorically has mentioned. So, we cannot seek any money, we should not be po politically affiliated. Also, Swami very clearly said, don't also have any connection with any other organizations. So, Swami was very clear that Satyasai is a unique organization. It is not like any other Panthis which we see. It is not like a sex or any, any other organization. Not to name or uh, I am not demeaning anybody. We are not like any other organizations where there is a, a kind of uh, a structure and uh, there is a, a, a particular curriculum which they are propagating. This is all about human transformation. Today, beautifully, uh, Mr. Dakapa in his uh, uh, morning talk, he said, Swami said four things. And the first thing is really, that is the key of this entire Sai service organization. Swami said, Atma Trupti Kosam Chaindi. For your own self-satisfaction, for your own self, do service in Samitis. That is the key. Not for sake of anybody. Atma Trupti Kosam means, I don't think any any teacher, any guru will ever say something so egalitarian, so encompassing, so universal. So, that is what he said. You do it for your own self-satisfaction. All Samiti conveners, we are here, we are actually feel very happy that we are connecting to Samiti conveners. We have to do the work with great, that Atma Samtrupti, for your own sake. And secondly, talking about uh, nine, point of, nine points of code of conduct, the very, very constitution of Sai organization, the nine point code of conduct. And the most important is, do not criticize others, especially in their absence. That is a, one of the key points. Don't criticize others. We have had this problem and uh, sorry if I, 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 if I am allowed to say this because we are a family, we should discuss. The problem is nobody outside is uh, criticizing us. It is we, we are criticizing within ourselves. That is the problem we are facing in Sai organization. Please, please, please. Samiti convener criticizes uh, Seva coordinator, Seva coordinator criticizes district coordinator, district coordinator criticizes uh, district president, district president criticizes uh, um, s s state president. It's endless. And all of us together uh, uh, criticize Satasai Central Trust. It doesn't work like this. So we need to stop this and please for somewhere in entire across this Sai organizations, whether it is in whichever level it is, whichever district level, state level, national level, international level, we should stop criticizing each other. That is a sin according to the nine point of code of conduct. We should not criticize each other. We go home, we criticize other. You know, we take this to our houses and talk. When we go home and talk, our wife is listening, our children are listening. Then you are taking them to go to Balavikas. What are they going to learn? If you go home and criticize and ask your children to go to Balavikas, what are they going to learn? So we should stop. Please, brothers and sisters, anybody criticizes, please tell them, sorry, sir, we are not willing to listen. Please do not criticize. A, a constructive dialogue is very important. There are times when things are not going well that can be reported to the person concerned, not just backbiting, because a akfa, we keep on telling, then it goes out, it gathers so many different dimensions, but something happens here, completely different picture goes out. So kindly adhere to the nine point of code of conduct, but most importantly, make sure 
that we do not criticize any others. We have one more issue. Lot of new people are coming into Sai Mission. Today, you come into Kulwant Hall and sit there, more than 50-60% of people are new people. There are new people. Every day, Swami is bringing new people into Sai Mission. It is, it is not growing by day or by year, by week. It is growing by minute to minute, Swami Mission is expanding in the world. Please remember that. It is expanding. God is expansion. Swami said, expansion is my life. He will keep on expanding. He is someone, he is not going to be. If we lose out, we are the losers. Swami also emphatically has said in one of his discourses, if you have received this blessing, if you have received this great opportunity of service in my organization or with, at my lotus feet, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Come what may, hold on to it. If you lose it, you are losing it forever. That is Swami has, in one of, I think we should play that discourse sometime. He said, if you lose the opportunity, you will never regain it back. You have lost it for good. So don't ever do, don't lose, lose him. We have got you have got him. Let us hold on to Swami very tightly. Brothers, without Sevadal, without Samiti Conveners, and I must say, and I place on record today on behalf of Sri Satyasai Central Trust, it is only because of Satyasai organization, Nimesh Bhai, I want to put it on record, it's only because of Satyasai organization and the committed Sevadal that we are able to administer and run Prashanti Nilayam. I must humbly submit this to all of you. It is only because of Sai organization, the Sai Sevadal, that Prashanti Nilayam is so beautiful. I have seen myself during COVID time. It is so difficult. It's such a difficult time we went through. How Sai organization people came here? I remember sometimes, Taking, we have to write to Chief Secretary of two states, three states, to bring Sevadal to Prashanti Nilayam. We used to have at least 200, 250 people at some very, at the lowest, anyway, strictest lockdown, we had 250 Sevadal in Prashanti Nilayam. And but for them, I think it is Swami's design. And uh, today, one more thing I realized that. Generally, we hear that Swami started Bhajan Mandali in 1963 on March 18th. But uh, Dr. Sir corrected today. He said, today it is a revelation. Actually, I also learned that Swami started Bhajan Mandali in 1961. Am I right, sir? You said 61 in Maleshwaram. 61. Because till now, printed material says it is 63 March 18. But 61, Swami started Bhajan Mandali. But uh, Dhaka Pasar, when you said that, some one thought came to my mind. Not 61. Swami started his Bhajan Mandali in 1946 in Pathamandiram, sir. That is the first Bhajan Mandali which happened in Pathamandiram, which he started and Bhajan started. I think this organization, he has, he has laid foundation right from his Pathamandram days, right when he was hardly 18 or 20, he started this. Today, I have the opportunity to travel. When I travel in the... I had been to Andhra Srikakulam side. I had been to Karnataka. I have been to Tamil Nadu recently. Last two months after COVID, I have been traveling. Every individual devotee, the way they express love to us, is really overwhelming. Swami is not anymore physically around, but the kind of love that they have for Swami, the kind of faith that they have in Swami, and the faith that Swami has put into every heart, how much He has touched each and every, every individual soul, is something amazing. We go to different, different, I was in Srikakulam, and it's, a, it's an experience by itself. Sir, organization is today 
That's why I say it is it is growing by second, not by day, by not by week. It's growing by Swami's. Swami's Palakonda was a, 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 a small town which we visited. 10,000 devotees are attending the function. Not expected at all. A small village. Now, I went to... Uh, recently to Karnataka, a small village, Nilaveni village. The way they have decorated the village when we were going is something I was crying. You can't, you can't help but to, your tears will roll down because you see the magnanimity of Bhagwan's work and Bhagwan's love. You will get overwhelmed because every house has put up an altar in the middle of the road with so much of decoration, so much of rangoli, so much of lambs, everything. And hundreds of houses have uh, uh, put up a beautiful altar in the middle of the road. As the procession goes, we have to take around and go around. And it is like Swami continuously welcoming us and blessing us also at the same time. The kind of uh, joy that which you get, I tell you, Sai Samiti conveners, you are doing a great job. It is all conveners. When we go there, there are conveners who are doing such tremendous job. I met a guy in that area. He had a bike accident because he was doing some work only, Sai organization work. And he keeps coming all along, even while we are there. He says, at the end of the day, he says, Sir, I am feeling better and I am able to walk better. Today, I don't know, I have forgotten all the pain. I am able to smoothly walk today because he, he forgot about his pain, he started walking. And I tell you, miracles happen. Believe it or not, miracles happen. On that day, when we were in a, a, a public meeting after seeing the Nilaveni, it's raining, it's drizzling, raining, slowly started. And uh, they told me, the next, I have to, I am the speaker. Now, Maybe five, six thousand of them seated in an open ground. Now it's drizzling. We just prayed to Swami. Swami, we are on the stage, we have some roof on top. But Swami's children, Swami's devotees are seated in the open. How can they be drenched and we are talking from a dais where it is covered? We are really, we pray to Swami. Swami, how can we do this? Believe it or not. Believe it or not, you can see a video of it. Within less than 60 seconds, the rain stopped. And uh, the entire, entire duration of the, that whole function, till they all had dinner and go back to their houses, it did not rain. And uh, I was told that after everybody reached home, it started raining. And it rained for 24 hours continuously. See, now, this is what is Bhagwan. Please, we are not with an ordinary guru or ordinary person. Nimesh Bhai said, we have only one boss. That is Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Very nice. But, the beauty of it is, he is not like any other boss. He has no protocols. If you want to tell something to him, you don't have to tell district president, then he has to go to national uh, state president, then go to journal president, go to all India president. No. If you want to tell this boss, the supreme boss, all you have to do is to close your eyes and talk to him. Where do you get a boss like that? Where is the boss who can be always with you, part of you? Who can hear you? Who can guide you? Who can guard you? Who can protect you? Where is the boss you can get? This is the uniqueness of Satya Sai organization because we have a boss who can be always with each individual person anywhere you go. Whether you are in the Bhajan Mandir or you are in a Samiti, you are in the anywhere in the forest you are serving, you can go any place. That Swami, that great boss, is listening to you, he can protect you, he can guide you. Where else you can get a someone something like this? There's no need for you to write and wait for a reply. You have instant reply, you have instant guidance.
So that is the beauty of it. I was in Tamil Nadu the other day. This is a place. It's a very, very touching place where our Sai Sevadal members are helping a school, Vela School of for people who are children who are differently abled. It's a very touching and uh, heart. It's, it's actually, it, 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 it sort of, uh, um, what say, chants you inside when you see that what a beautiful work that Swami's children are doing all over the world. 187 children who cannot hear anything, who cannot speak anything. Their parents are not taking care, but Sai Sevadala taking care of those children. It's a, one must see to believe these miracles. You don't see miracle anywhere else. This is the miracle. Those children who cannot hear anything, you put a loudspeaker, they can't hear anything. In fact, when they were performing on the stage, I was sitting down. They have, some teachers are, they have to sign them to do what next. That is what, even dancing, the teacher is telling them how to dance, in which side to turn. The, even the, the speakers are on the, on the, glaringly they are there, but they can't hear. And those children are being taken care. Those children are being cared for. And every corridor, every place you see, Swami's picture and Swami is being with them. And so many Sevadal visit them, help them. And miracles after miracles. They say so many miracles happen. If even they fall short of something, next day morning somebody will be there to offer them five times or ten times of that. That is a kind of Swami's. So we have no dearth of anything. Swami is the doer. Other day, I was interacting with a young man in my office, where uh, in Central Trust office. This boy got selected as a fighter pilot. His mother has prayed to Bhagwan that if this boy gets selected, I will send him for your service. And this boy is, and the selection process, and uh, you hear the experience, it is only Swami who can do this. Eight lakh people take exam across the country. Eight lakh children take the exam in country. Then some, they filter, only one and a half lakh people or something like that, they qualify. After that, there are filters and Finally, it boils down to 300 children. After 300, only 20 will be selected. Because government of India is spending almost 2 crores on them for training them as a fighter pilots. And this boy gets selected because his mother prayed to Baba that if he gets selected, I'll send him for 15 days work. Whatever it is, that mother, as soon as he's gone home and told that, Mother, I have got selected for this. Mother said, it is grace of Swami, Swami is gifted. I have prayed like this, beta, please go and do service. And this boy, diligently coming and serving, standing, wearing a scarf in my office, opening the door. Good seven, eight days, I did not know that this boy has this background. When you hear this, what, what do you feel about Sai mission? Recently, means every day in Prashanti Nilayam, we experience this joy, the divine joy. Just other day, I can share this. The current Defense Secretary's wife is wearing scarf and uh, uh, doing service here. Nobody knows about it. The defense secretary comes here just last week to pick her up. That only that's time when defense secretary is coming, you have a big entourage of people 
HIL people are, you know, from uh, HIL, they are uh, following it up. From Defense Ministry, from all the, everybody is following up. People are all standing there, a lot of vehicles are there. But he has come to pick up his wife, who is doing Sevadal duty in hospital in Kulwant Hall. <laughs> last week, last week it happened. Now, whom, what are we, how blessed we are that people see this Sai organization as the only solution for human suffering. This is the only way that humans can relate to Bhagavan. And let us keep doing His service. Let us keep only service, service, service. That is the dearest to Bhagavan. That is the dearest to Bhagavan. Namasmaran and so back to basics. The most important is the Samiti, the Bhajana Mandali, the Balvikas. These are all the three things which we need to strengthen. And that is what Swami wanted it. Swami started this organization as a spiritual mission. It is not a normal NGO. It is not like any other NGOs. This is, this is not a non-governmental organization. It is always, it's a God's organization. So it is, it is a spiritual organization. It is not like any other just doing service. And Swami said, why am I starting this, this organization is all organization. Many people are there. We are not criticizing anybody. Lot of people are into spiritual teachings. But Swami said, any spiritual teaching, any kind of service, without faith in God is useless. That's why I have started this Sai organization. You do any work, any spiritual sadhana, any work, but you should have faith in God. And with love for God, if you do any work, that will become sadhana. That will become the real transforming agent for each and every individual soul. So let us all remember that, that Swami is the doer, Swami is taking care of all of us and keep doing service. And in one of the discourses, Swami said, when you are doing my work, I will do your work. Not only I will take care of you now, for seven generations, I will take care of your families and everybody. So, anybody who is an office bearer, don't think you are working only for yourself. For good seven generations, Swami's blessings will continue. Before I close, I must say one a very important uh, event which happened when I, I was a witness to it. We used to have a, a devotee from Tirupur. His name is Sachidanandam. We were in, a, we used to go to Kodai Canal with Swami. One of the days, the generator, in the very first times, generator did not work. It was a, the Sriram Honda small generator, 10 kV generator. You need to put kerosene and then uh, run it. It did not work. So, Evening when Swami was sitting, the power went and this uh, generator was on. The lights were very dim and uh, sometimes it was flickering. So we need a new generator. Kodai Canal doesn't have, uh, those days uh, did not have shops. This gentleman, he is hard on hearing. He has a problem of hearing and he can't see in one eye. He is hard on hearing, he can't see in one eye. Around, uh, maybe around 9 o'clock after dinner, he has taken his car, gone to Madurai, which is 120 kilometers on that hill. He drives down and he can't see properly, he can't hear horn. God knows how he has himself driven the car, gone to Madurai. He knew somebody there, some dealer, he has woken him up, picked up a new generator, morning again by 7.30, 8 o'clock, he has driven back and come to uh, Swami's uh, Sai Suti in Kodai Kana. Now, that is the 
commitment of any devotee. But what happened later? When morning Swami came down and they saw this, this guy was completely, his one eye was red. His whole night is awake. Now, what is Swami's reaction when he sees somebody who is not cared for anything? He could have died. He, he, he can't see in one eye, he can't hear. Any, somebody honking, he wouldn't hear. And he can't see properly and uh, it was uh, in July, ma month of July. And uh, generally, the hills get fogged in the night. Only, I think, whenever I lifted back, it is only Swami who was driving him. But whatever happened in the morning when he, Swami saw, Swami was overwhelmed when he saw a devotee doing so much service. Swami called him, said, sit with me and have your breakfast. Swami insisted that he should have breakfast with him. He had his breakfast. Swami said he did not sleep whole night. Swami told us to make a bed for him in the ante room. We made a nice bed for him. Swami told, called him, said, now you sleep. Whole night you are awake, you sleep. He is shaken. He is not able to even sit on the bed. Swami said, sit now. He sits on the bed. He is not sleeping. Swami makes him sleep. You sleep. He says, Narayana, Narayana, and he sleeps. And Swami takes the blanket and puts the blanket on him. And instructs, instructs two of us to stay near the door so that nobody enters that uh, room and disturbs him. Till he sleeps, whatever time he gets up, till such a time, don't disturb, nobody should go into that room. That room, two of us like a Dwarapalaka, Jaivij, yes, we were waiting outside, not to allow anybody into that Sevak's room. Now, why I am saying is, that is the Swami love, which we will get when we do the service of Bhagwan and service what He is so dear to Him. He will protect us. He will even put a blanket. He will take care. He will make sure all the gods and goddesses are stand by you to take good care of you. That is our Bhagwan. That is the love with which He can protect all of us. So make sure that we are only here to please Him, nobody else. Here, please remember, our connect is only with Him, nobody else. Do not develop unnecessary friendship, no relationships, no partnerships. That is one more problem. We should not start any, in Samiti, don't start any new partnerships and then it gets on to so many other things. The chair, position, power, how we were talking, Nimesh Bhai, all these are all only for the sake of our work, but for service all of us are equal. These are all, let us not get lost into position, power, show. Swami doesn't like it. Swami doesn't, doesn't bless anybody more by somebody who is in the position or sitting on the chair. Swami is emphatically, clearly has stated this. There is no need for anybody to have any position to have my grace. Because millions of devotees outside the organization, they all are graced by Bhagwan. So let us always remember that we have such a loving God and we have got a great opportunity to serve Him. So, let us hold on to Swami. Let us transform ourselves. And only a person who is experienced only can talk about Sai organization, Sai teachings. Practice. Swami wants only us to practice His teachings and by practice people should re realize that we are Sai workers, Sai Sevadal. So, let us Walk the path. Let us take Swami's teachings very seriously and inculcate them into ourselves. Only when we follow Swami's path, then our life will be fulfilled. And many of us have been there for decades, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. But new people are coming. Please, all the people who have been in Sai Mission, my appeal to you is just encourage the new people. Get the new blood, new thinking into the organization. Let us get the new people. Give them, give them the opportunity. Don't keep on obstructing. Somehow, even 
I, I correct myself also. Many times we say, Hamko Malme, I will tell you, we, this is the way we know now what we are doing. Because we are little seniors in this, this is how Swami wanted it. Now, once you somebody says, this is how Swami wanted, that's it. We can't go beyond that. So, please encourage new people. They may not know how to go about it. So, don't snub them. Don't say, hey, Hamko Malume, don't teach us and all that. Just be very patient with them, new people. And secondly, the people who have been in the system, you should always stand as a good ideal. The new people are looking towards us. They will decide whether to join this organization or not, seeing us. Are itna saal se hai abhi, he is doing like this, then what is the use of joining? So please, each one of us are focus on individual transformation. Let us offer each one our soul at the lotus feet. And next three days, I am sure, all Sai brothers will be sharing their thoughts. And I am really overwhelmed and thanking you all for continued support to Prashant Nilayam. And Prashant Nilayam is our, our, our heart, our soul, our everything. This is the place where Swami started His mission. The river started from here only and it's always connected back to the source. So, people keep coming to Prashant Nilayam. This is a great, great gathering. And uh, I again, once again, thank each one of you for doing such a wonderful service in Sai Mission. May Swami bless each one of you and your families so that you continue to do this great service, good service, to please our Lord, Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Thank you very much. Sairam.